Hey, WinTech Warriors. Welcome to WinTech Live. WinTech Live is our new weekly live training session. Each week, we cover a new topic to help you on your WinTech HMI application building journey. This live session will run for around 15 minutes, and if you have any questions related to the content being discussed, please wait until after the training session, and we will address some of your questions then. Today, we will discuss a few use cases and basic techniques for using macros within Easy Builder Pro. Alrighty, so let's head on over to a demo project I've created for this live session. Let's also discuss some use cases for macros. Arithmetic. Macros are the only way to perform basic arithmetic and use aggregate functions. In this example, we're taking the value from the registers on the left, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing that value by 10, and the result will be, be, will be placed in the register to the right. And we will take a closer look at that macro here shortly. Scaling. You can easily scale between different engineering values using macros. For example, converting Celsius values to Fahrenheit, metric values to standard, and other measurements. We'll demonstrate uh, a Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion here shortly. Data transfers. You can transfer data from one device to another using a macro. So for this example, I have added a Modbus device to our project, and we will be taking a value entered in this Modbus device's register and transferring it to a register on our local HMI. Some benefits of using macro to transfer data are it's the only way to transfer some PLC bits, and it's much faster to create data transfers via macro than using the data transfer object, which we do have uh, video content covering. And also content covering that subject on our forum. Free protocol. The free protocol driver allows you to communicate with devices that do not support a common protocol or those that communicate without a complex protocol structure. To send and receive data when using this driver type, we use macros. We have a great write-up on our forum. That's forum.wintechusa.com. And the forum post is called, How to Send or Receive Data Using the Free Protocol Driver. So check it out if you're looking for information on using the free protocol driver. Okay, let's just pull up our Easy Builder Pro user manual. And in the macro section, you will find all the info you need to create a macro. Uh, you'll also find variable types, uh, variable ranges that fall within those types, and a few naming rules for variables. A variable name must start with a letter of the alphabet. Um, variable names longer than 32 characters are not allowed. And reserved words cannot be used as variable names. Something like max, you would not be able to use that as a variable name. Okay, so let's head to our Easy Builder Pro project. Take a quick peek at the macro for our arithmetic example. So within your project tab, just select macro to access the macro manager. Here you would create a new macro or edit an existing one. I'm going to select our arithmetic macro. Let's put this here. Let's go ahead and increase the font size a little bit. Okay, so up top is where we'd first declare our variables. Um, using the short data type, which here you can see the range is positive 32,767 to negative 32,768. So to declare a variable, you would just uh, type the data type for the 
variable and then the variable name. As you can see, I have created a few very declared a few variables here, two for each uh, math operation. Okay. So as I said earlier, values entered within this register to the left will be uh, taken and the appropriate math operation, like adding 10, subtracting 10, multiplying by 10, and dividing by 10 will take place. Then that value will then be thrown into this register to the right. So to do that, I've declared our variables, two for each math operation, as I had mentioned. Um, we'd first use a get data function, which let me just comment this out and oh, we can do this together. So to use a function within our macro manager, just, I mean, you could manually type it or selecting the get slash set function button here down to the left will allow you to choose a function. And upon choosing a function, for example, we're going to choose get data. You will receive a quick description as well as usage examples. So what I'm going to do is select the get data function. I will then choose the variable I want to uh, store this, the value entered in this register to. So I'll choose the addition variable. I will then choose the register address. In this case, it's LW5, so I'll select our local HMI, select LW5, and leave the data count as is. So we're taking the value from LW5 and storing it within our addition variable. On the next line, we'll take our other variable, which is sum, and uh, Add the variable with the value entered in LW5 here, which is addition in this case, plus 10. So that will take the value entered here, add 10 to it, and store that value within the sum variable. Now we want to take this sum variable and set that data into this register to the right. And to do that, we will use the set data function. So again, I'm selecting the get slash set function button down to the left. Select the set data function. And here in the variable drop down list, I will select our sum variable. And in the right section, we're writing it to LW6. So I will switch our device to the local HMI, change the address type to LW. Enter six. And you could see the same has been done for our subtraction, multiplication, and division uh, math operations here. So, that being said, let's go ahead and see it in action. So, I'm going to run a quick demonstration offline simulation. Select our arithmetic window. Let's see, let's add 10 to a value of 10. So subtract 10 from the value of 20. Multiply uh, 10 to a value of well, about 30. Let's divide 40 by 10. Now I'll execute our macro. And it works like a charm. 10 plus 10, 20, 20 minus 10 equals 10, 30 times 10, 340 divided by 10, 4. Okay, now I should mention that I used a combo button to execute the macro. So you would just add the execute macro action and select the macro you'd like to execute. In this case, the arithmetic macro. All right. 
Now let's go ahead and take a quick peek at scaling. Where is it? Oh, yep. Okay. So for this example, we are converting a Celsius value to Fahrenheit. And let's take a closer look at the macro that does that sorcery. So again, heading to our macro manager, I'll select Celsius to Fahrenheit. That's the name of it. And up top of selected periodical execution. And um, entered a time interval of 10 milliseconds. That means that this macro will execute every, uh, let's see, second. So it's 10 millisecond times 100. Okay. Pop this open a little more. And I have declared some float variables, Celsius and Fahrenheit. And just as before, I'm getting the data from this first value, LW0. I'm applying our uh, formula to convert celsius to fahrenheit and i'm then setting that value which at this point is our fahrenheit variable into lw3 so let's go ahead and see that in action I'm running an offline simulation or simulation okay celsius to fahrenheit here we go as you can see, it's already working. There's no need to press the button, uh, the combo button to execute the macro as we did before because it is periodically executing. And you can see it works like a charm already. And we haven't entered anything in this field. Let's go ahead and just do this. There we go. Works like a charm. All right, up next, the transfer of data. So as I mentioned earlier, we are transferring data entered into a device or a Modbus. Sorry, entered into a register for a Modbus device than our project. And uh, transferring that data to the local HMI. Let's take a quick look at this macro. And this should look pretty familiar by now. Data transfer. I declare our variable, which is a short. Uh, we're getting and setting data. Let's make this a little bigger. And let me comment this out. And we'll run through this one together. All right, so again, we're going to get to data. Oh, let me just move this over a little bit. All right, so again, we're taking the value entered in this Modbus register, 3x1, and then we're transferring it to a register in our local HMI. And to do that, I'm going to use the get data function to take the value entered here. Go. Get data, select our variable that we've declared up here, v1. Select the address for the register, which is Modbus DCP IP 3x1. Okay. Now we've scooped up this value. And all we need to do is create this set data function to uh, send it to this value, which is in our, this register, which is on our local HMI. So we'll just create a set data function. Choose our variable. Choose our local HMI from the device dropdown list. Select the correct address type and address LW13. Okay, let's see it in the next. Okay, entering a value into our Modbus address, executing our macro, that data is then transferred to a register on our local HMI. Alrighty, let's take a look at a little bonus uh, 
window here. Let's round a value up or down. Let's take a look. So the end, the value entered in LW14 will be rounded and then placed in LW16. Let's take a look at the macro for that. There we go. Make that a little bigger. All right, so for this initial value, um, which will be a flow number, I've declared it a float. Num1 variable name. Um, and then we're sending it to this register, and that will be a short data type variable, which is called number two, num2. Again, we're just getting data from this register. We're using the round function, which you can access within the get slash set function. Here, oh, round. We have a description, the use. And then we're setting that data over here. Let's run a quick demo, check it out. Okay, we enter our value. Execute the macro, it's rounded down. Let's try that again. Rounding up. Okay, welcome to the wonderful world of uh, using macros in Easy Builder Pro. You're now prepared to start using your application within Easy Builder Pro. I'll now take a few minutes to answer some questions related to the info we've just covered. If you have a question that's not related to the topics discussed, please check out our forum. Right here, forum.wintechusa. Sign up, join the Wintech Warrior Nation. Plenty of staff written technical tutorials, and if you have a question, it's possible that it has already been asked and answered either by us or another member of the community. So come on down, check it out. You're going to love it. Also, poke around our YouTube channel. We have plenty of video tutorials, and there's always something in the works. So come on down, check around, check often.